Oh, sorry, I got cut off there. Anyway, this is part two to my video on science. Like I was saying, um, and do watch this uh, the first video because it'd be very intellectually and serious of you and insensitive you not to watch the first video and judge me for the second video. Uh, what I was saying is, you know, people will um, th they'll presume that you're not knowledgeable about certain things. Uh, very, very, um, very unintelligently, if you question the basic dogmas of science. Um, but I think that people who grew up with this scientific inquisitiveness, who were not looking for it as an answer for something to share in common with, as a belief system with other people, and, uh, uh, and who also read a diverse number of things, um, I think that those people would be skeptical of science at one point or another, as I was. Um, it varies from person to person. People always vary. They're mysterious. But I, I don't think, you know, whenever I hear people say stuff to the effect of, well, you're not a researcher, so you can't possibly know about this. I mean, you dropped this when you were young. I just think, you know, even if I were to pick up something like research again, not only would I be, I mean, I mean not only would I be terribly afraid, of, terribly afraid of wasting my time, but also I'd always have to be skeptical about what, what the point of this research would be, what, what the point of, of it would be, what could science offer me that's an absolute truth that literature doesn't offer me? You might say, well, science is based in fact. Literature tells you that fact's kind of a, a matter of opinion. And science, t I mean, I might say science is a matter of theory, and you say, no, because it's based on observations and empiricism. And I might say, well, Hemingway and Faulkner and all these people made observations and that I'd probably value their observations more because their observations had an air of spontaneity to them. There's something peculiar about them, and they can depict them with incredible dexterity. And, um, you know, scientific textbooks don't tend to do that. In fact, when scientists talk about the world, it seems relatively uninteresting. And I'm not saying that something has to be interesting to be true, but in a sense, it would be, wouldn't it, if it's new? And a true empiricism would be based on immediate experience Science is a kind of experience which is always simulated. It's always kind of ritualistic. So there's that. I mean, experiment is in a sense ritual. It's just, and I do agree with Rupert Sheldrake. Um, I've noticed this myself before I even listened to his TED Talks and lectures. You know, I visited recently, like last year, an, an observatory with my family. And, um, you know, my grandfather is an engineer and my father... Um, and my grandfather, on uh, my mother's side, is an engineer, but my father was, you know, they're, they're both in this, uh, basically these ex-Soviet scientists. And they, they walk around, and they notice there's a peculiar difference between these people over here, or like seasoned old chaps. I'm not saying that they're dogmatic by, 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 by any, I'm, I mean, I'm only meaning as an example, but there's this difference between these um, seasoned chaps over here and, say, the younger scientist who was the museum curator. Um, and I think I'm using that word properly. Well, the, the guy who was basically showing people around and said, like, gravity's our best theory. Because that's a different attitude towards science. It's a humble attitude towards science. And, I mean, I'm not saying that my parents are necessarily unhumble people, but, I mean, from time to time, I think if you've been doing something for a while, there's a tendency for people to get stuck in ruts, but not everyone does. But there's also a tendency for unhumble people, usually sometimes inside the scientific community, sometimes outside of it, to say, yeah, this is definitely fact. It doesn't qualify philosophically for fact. And like, people might say, well, this is the truth. Everyone knows it. Mm, that sounds fascistic, doesn't it? And, you know, I might scour the world looking for someone who's the definite authority. And they'll just say, no, but, well, I don't know how they know it, but someone knows it. They've done studies. It's always the they that's uh, done the, the studies. I might eventually find the utmost authority, and the authority might turn out to, the person who did the study might turn out to be one of these pricks who basically, like, can't sit down for a philosophical conversation with you for about an hour or so, or even a few minutes, without calling you out on everything and, and saying that, you know, he feels insane talking to you because you question common sense. I mean, this can happen. It would be naive to say it doesn't. And so, for me, like, I just go back to myself, and I think, well, science is something I read about in a book. 
when I was in middle school, I had to learn, look, I can't stuff this stuff down people's throats. I ought not to. And I developed a humility about it. And over time, I realized this isn't a matter of fact. It's something I read about. And anyone who encounters it read about it. Anyone doing this kind of research is doing it out of subordinating himself to a system which he or she, in a sense, read about. And um, the thing about it is also that how do I say this? Um, if I if someone were to commit to being a researcher, and you realize like after years of going through school that this isn't all very this isn't all very real. It might just be um, a matter of just a best fit model or you just a worldview, no better or worse than fiction. Um, maybe even worse in some respects, maybe better in some other respects. You know, I mean, it takes a certain kind of person, it's very rare, to keep going with that. I think that most people would either say, oh, God, I wasted years on nothing, or they deny it. You know, Nietzsche observed this stuff very well, you know. And I think that um, I certainly couldn't commit myself to any kind of systematic way of thinking, knowing that, knowing there's a chance that I might end up believing it. And I don't think that the dogmas of scientism right now are anything different than the dogmas of religion. So that's all that I really...